Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 26 of the Cloud Computing Training Show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognized and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. On this week's show, we're excited to have as our special guest, Saram Krishnan. Saram is the SVP of product and partnerships and marketing at Headspin and he was previously the head of international growth at Tinder, the head of new markets at Spotify. Saram has started, scaled and sold technology companies and is an active angel investor. Hi Saram and Dave, a warm welcome to you both. It's exciting to have you both on the training show this week. It's great to be here. It's great to have our guest. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. Absolute pleasure, chaps. Um, this week, we'll be talking about how can enterprise accelerate digital transformation? Over to you again, Dave. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, we have to kind of figure out how digital transformation can be taught in terms of people that we can, you know, leverage to go off and make this stuff happen. And, and we're, we're at a crisis of talent right now. We're not uh, graduating that many people who are really kind of coming out of the college universities, really adept to digital transformation, cloud computing, IoT. You know, really kind of, uh, you know, thinking out of the box in terms of how we're going to le leverage digital technology to kind of take our companies to the next level. And we need to figure out a way or an approach and how to train them. And, you know, I'm, I'm involved with lynda.com and there's a bunch of, you know, computer-based training, you know, technologies out there. One of the things I've noticed is they don't really do a very good job in kind of approaching the core digital transformation stuff. And I think it's something that... Uh, need to start looking at going forward. So I would love to hear from our guest, you know, how he would recommend that uh, companies look at training that's out there, what training's available, and how we can kind of create training strategies to ensure that we're gonna have the right people, you know, for this job a year, two years, three years down the line, when we actually need these people to really kind of enable our company to take them to the next level. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think what you can do is, uh, I mean, you could one could utilize um, existing talent that's available outside the company. So a lot of what a lot of large enterprises these days resort to what they call reverse mentorship. Reverse, reverse mentorship. So uh, they go and hire uh, a group of whether it's millennials or Gen Z, and and get them to come in once a week, twice a week for about five to six months, or maybe three to five months to educate them on what the latest internet uh, trends are, what the latest uh, productive tools, uh, internet tools that are making making the rounds. To, so that C-suite management team and operating team all are exposed to what's out there, right? So this is, I, this I feel is, is a table stakes way of, 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 of getting your sales, your, your, your employees exposed and trained to, to know what's available. Because again, at the end of the day, there, there, there are certain things that you know, uh, there are certain things that you know you don't know, and there are certain things that you don't know you don't know. Now, the whole point of this exercise is to make sure that your your employees, your organizations are aware of uh, what they don't know and also uh, aware of what is new in the market, right? Now, as far as training is concerned, uh, the easiest way to train, and I've done this personally myself, uh, to train um, an entire organization is to in, is is to hire people um, who are who who are more sort of uh, who, who are pioneers from the internet or the or the digital sector. Now, hiring them at the top is very important because these people will then start aligning the organization to to their digital transformation vision, right? So because it's, it's very expensive to retrain and hire resources bottom up. Um, I think there's certain things you can do to expose your 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 workforce, uh, but but hiring them and retraining them all together will cost money. And I think and I think it's a worthwhile long term endeavor. But one of the things many we can also do is basically introduce leadership within the organization that has done this before. Uh, and again, going back to our earlier discussion, uh, these people then introduce metrics, whether it's, I mean, it could be IoT metrics, design thinking metrics, uh, customer experience metrics that can help measure uh, value creation and develop a plan uh, to sort of track these metrics. Uh, lastly, um, um, 
I mean, there's 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 the saying: if you if you can't train the people you want, you buy the people you want, right? So obviously, when I mean buying, is I'm not saying hiring, but I'm also saying uh, acquire companies. Uh, you can acquire smaller companies uh, if you're an enterprise with five, ten, twenty, thirty million dollars in revenue. Uh, there's nothing wrong uh, dropping a little bit of money, acquiring small teams that have been working on mobile problems uh, or web problems and integrating them within your workforce because this will then accelerate uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the adoption curve within your, process, within your organization. Microsoft, as we all know, uh, over the past five, six, seven years, uh, acquired smaller companies, smaller mobile app companies. All these companies are now uh, obviously integrated within the Microsoft ecosystem and now renamed into Microsoft mobile app. So it's a great way to, to begin and obviously Microsoft is doing well. Uh, yeah, so that's what I would do. I would basically sort of do this reverse mentorship so that you get exposure to what's out there. These are the gaps in your knowledge. Uh, there's uh, hiring uh, the people from the industry who can sort of align the organization with new digital transformation vision. Um, and then obviously at the end, uh, you can't train the, I mean, training is a long-term process, but you want to introduce uh, a, Dy 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 dynamic. Sorry, if you want to introduce uh, innovation within the organization, you can you can also acquire. So ultimately, you're saying that uh, you know it's it's really kind of a complex strategy that you put together if we're going to go out there and, and hire and train and, and do the things. In fact, I you know I would have problems finding trying to figure out a way to train people because I don't know if there's enough people out there who really kind of understand the technology who are able to kind of train right courses, things like that. And so the ones that are learning digital enablement are the ones who are able to, um, uh, you know, train on demand or basically learn as you go or dynamic, you know, autodidact training, you know, the ability to kind of pick things up as you go. And I find that's really kind of, you know, 10 to 20 percent of the population. What about the rest of the uh, people that are looking to have training given to them and looking to learn through different different ways, classrooms and CBTs, things like that. Yeah, I think I think there are courses out there uh, available. There are online courses available. It's a, it's a hot new topic, as you mentioned. Uh, that there's a way uh, people can do it part-time. Uh, I think it's a worthwhile investment, whether it's realigning your mindset towards uh, digital goals or digital metrics. Uh, whether it's uh, trying to understand new operating model that's relevant to the internet, I feel like there's always there's a part-time course out there. I mean, there's also consultants, and I'm speaking to two very, very uh, successful consultants who who can also help uh, organizations uh, 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 rethink their 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 transformation. So um, I think there 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 are a bevy of solutions out there, but it does take time. Uh, it's it's something that can that I I don't expect people or organizations to to adapt very quickly to, to because it's it, it, it is it is a process um, but but yeah so um, you know I, I'd love to get a recruiter's perspective on this Brad in terms of what you're thinking uh, as uh, you know this kind of enablement you know or this this kind of uh, concept this trend you know started emerging from the cloud iot world it's kind of the synergistic merger of all these things together and the really kind of you know create the last mile in the digital enablement for the enterprises so what are you seeing out there in terms of are people seeing this as kind of the next des destination and really kind of aligning their career in that direction are they seeing this as something that's going to be a uh, part of cloud or part of iot or part of fintech or you know part of whatever technologies that are out there yeah, absolutely. I think it, it, it really is a merger of everything with regards to where you've got your existing skills and the lack of training out there at the moment to get these specific or identify the specific needs that need to be filled by organizations and the training needs particularly. You know, you need to look at people's aptitude skill sets of learning on the job or how quickly they can turn their existing skill sets around. So I think that's one of the things that certainly what Saram said about, you know, training up your existing workforce and making sure it's led from a, you know, know a, a, um, a newly acquired person <laughs> at sea level that can bring in the transformational needs that that organi organization needs uh, with regards to training as well as obviously the the direction of transformation and how the business goes from a browser or net uh, facilitation of customer experience into an app world or a mobile app world at least um, and I think 
it, it is one of those things where it's difficult to find the individuals per se for each individual project but it's not impossible but it's also looking at candidates that have a, a strong skill set already that, that can adopt a fresh mindset and a learning curve and, and I'd like to think it's a case of measuring the learning curve of what a candidate is willing to do and what time, time frame that looks like um, because then at least you've got more conceivability of getting people into the right project and knowing that they, they're going to run with it as opposed to inevitably but potentially sink sorry not inevitably but potentially sink because they just don't have the learning curve for that particular project and I think you know it's it's an exciting time for that but I think if it's not if the needs aren't identified by the organization excuse me if the needs aren't identified by the organization it's going to be very difficult to get the right staff in yeah I agree and I think that uh, you know it's it's going to be uh, one of those things where I want to hire, like the early days of cloud, I want to hire somebody, but I don't know what they need to be or the skills they need to have. And I remember getting calls, like, like we got enterprises looking for cloud people and I never understood what that was. And, you know, you have to get a little bit more detail in what the designs are. And I think this is going to be, you know, breaking down the skill sets um, into the, uh, you know, categories that we're, we're going to need. That mean design systems and, ergonomic software design and uh, the ability to have IoT based systems, data acquisition, data analysis, real time data analysis, you know, all those sorts of things are things we just, you know, have been talking about, but haven't really implemented in the enterprises for, for the uh, for the larger part. And so we're going to have to think in those directions as well. So I'd love to have our guests kind of provide the final word as to what advice you would have for the uh, corporations out there that are looking to create a training strategy to kind of get them into their digital enabled future? Um, I think the first thing we can do is sponsor, or try to identify sponsorship opportunities, uh, education sponsorship opportunities, uh, try to introduce uh, some of these topics, uh, these, these curriculums as part of your uh, employee uh, uh, once a week, twice a week uh, training. I, I think it benefits the entire organization if if there's there's cadence and there's um, and, and especially when it comes to learning about new technologies. Um, I think you have to uh, spend money to make money, obviously. And spending one part of spending money is investing in the future. Uh, and 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 people people say, how do I invest my? I mean, I've got this amount, this amount of money to invest. How do I how do I prioritize my investment? Uh, save, save some of that investment uh, for for your employees, whether it's in the form of training, sponsorship, um, and obviously hiring. But but uh, the the ones the organizations that are the most proactive on this front uh, are the ones that would emerge in three, four, five years uh, as as the one as the ones that would eventually lead. Uh, so so I think it's a necessary. Um, investment in order to sort of along with obviously a bunch of other things to to accelerate your your company's uh, digital uh, innovation. Could you be more? Yeah, very well put, Saram. Very well put. I think it, you, you've got a very, very good, uh, very good take on this. It's been wonderful having you on the show. To be honest, it's been uh, great. It, it's finally all come together, which was awesome. Thanks for being oh. part of the uh, the training show, oh. the Australia show, and the C Suite show this week. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good to be here. That's been awesome. And Dave, thanks as always for being a pillar of the show. Always a pleasure. Yeah, it's always great to be on the show with you, Brad. Thank you very much. No worries. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really do hope you enjoyed watching this week's training show. We covered some very interesting topics this week. So if you're watching the training show now, which we hope you are, uh, which you obviously are, uh, we'll then go back and watch the C-Suite show and the Australia show because we've covered some great topics this week. And thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share these videos with your friends and with your colleagues. Uh, below are the links to everyone on Twitter so you can catch up with us on there as well. Thanks for watching. And uh, remember to watch next week's show as well, which will be very entertaining, I'm sure. <laughs> thanks for watching. <laughs>